We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is Newsbreak for Wednesday, August 23rd. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. Just a reminder that Newsbreak comes to you each weekday at 7 a.m. You can watch it on djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal's mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We're going to spend the next few minutes looking at news, sports, and weather for Northeast Mississippi. Let's start with the weather forecast for today. Mostly cloudy skies, going to see a high around 85 degrees, low of 65, just a 20% chance of rain. The three-day outlook, Thursday, sunny skies, high of 87, low of 63, 0% chance of rain. Friday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 88, low of 65, 10% chance of rain. Saturday, mostly cloudy with a high of 86, a low of 67, 20% chance of rain. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories from the Daily Journal and djournal.com on this Wednesday. A few hours after the Lee County Board of Supervisors voted not to build a new jail, Sheriff Jim Johnson took action to deal with overcrowding. Supervisors voted Monday to renovate the Lee County Adult Jail instead of expanding it. Johnson told officials his only choice would be to start releasing prisoners, and he started doing so Monday afternoon. Johnson began releasing nonviolent prisoners, bringing the total capacity down from 231 to 203 by Tuesday afternoon. The jail has 202 beds. While considered nonviolent, about one third of the released inmates are facing felony charges. Of the 231 prisoners at the jail Monday afternoon, 101 were Tupelo prisoners. The county had 76 prisoners, and seven smaller Lee County municipalities combined for 23 prisoners. Limiting the number of inmates will create a revolving door where prisoners were brought to the jail and either bonded out or simply released in short order. The Mississippi Senate's Transportation Committee will hold a pair of meetings this week for members to hear about the poor condition of the state's roads and bridges. The hearings will be held on Thursday and Friday. They will include a discussion of possible solutions. So far, finding a solution for the state's infrastructure needs has been difficult. State officials have been grappling with the issue for about five years. Legislative leaders have rejected calls to raise the state's 18.4 cent per gallon gas tax. A study by the Mississippi Economic Council said the state needs $400 million a year to make the needed repairs to its roads and bridges. MEC Interim Executive Director Scott Waller will speak at this week's hearing about the economic impact of a deteriorating road system. Other officials also will testify about the challenges they face. The Boy Scouts Yakna Area Council hopes to add a few more cubs to the pack with the help of the Tupelo Public School District. The council will hold its annual series of school night for scouting meetings over the next month. It will be held at Thomas Street, Parkway, Joyner, Lawndale, Pierce Street, and Lawhorn Elementary Schools. The meetings are informational and open to parents and new scouts. The first meeting was held Tuesday at Carver Elementary. District Executive Taylor Neal said she hopes to recruit some new members in grades one through five for the Cub Scouts program. She would also like to see some sixth graders join the Boy Scouts. To get the information to the boys themselves, each of the schools where a meeting has been scheduled will, ha will have a boy talk session. The next meeting will be held at Thomas Street on August 24th. And in sports, Mississippi State's women will get another shot at South Carolina on February 5th. The stakes won't be as high as last time these teams met when South Carolina beat MSU in the NCAA championship game. The rematch will be played in Starkville. The Bulldogs' SEC schedule for the coming season was unveiled Tuesday. League play begins December 31st at Georgia. MSU, which went 34-5 and last season, will face rival Ole Miss on January 11th in Starkville and on January 28th in Oxford. As for the Rebels, they open SEC play December 31st at Arkansas. After that, Ole Miss will play three of its next four games at home, including a January 4th home game against South Carolina. Ole Miss went 17-14 and last year and lost in the first round of the WNIT. For more on the stories I talked about today, be sure to pick up a copy of your daily journal or visit us at djournal.com. Also, be sure to check out a couple of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal, The Memo, All Things Northeast Mississippi, with W. Derek Russell, new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Find it in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. Also, check out Prep Rally, high school sports podcast with myself and Dalton Middleton. New episodes every Wednesday. Find it in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at preprally.djournal.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at DJournalNow. Give our Facebook page a like as well. 
That's it for Newsbreak on this Wednesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.